I'm Christian Babcock of the Hunter's Advantage, and in today's video, we're gonna walk you through the five worst places to hit a deer and how to recover them if you make a less than desirable shot. If you've been bow hunting long enough, you know that bad shots happen. But once that arrow leaves your bow, there's no bringing it back. So where do we go from here if we make a bad shot? I've been bow hunting for 13 years now, and I've made plenty of these less than desirable shots myself. So I did want to say, as bow hunters, we practice all year long to make sure these kind of shots never happen. We want to be as ethical, as efficient, and as prepared as possible when you're trying to kill an animal with archery equipment. And I wanted to make that distinction before we got into the video. If you bow hunt long enough, you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say some of these shots happen. I believe that shot selection is one of the most important things in bow hunting, but inevitably, even with good shot selection, you're gonna see some of these bad shots every once in a while. Don't take these lightly and don't ever take a less than ideal shot or you will for sure end up in this situation. We've been filming our hunts for the last five years and sadly we've got some of these shots on video as well. So throughout the video, we're gonna be playing some of our hunt footage to share with you guys and walk you through the examples of how to recover these deer when you make a bad shot. At number one, we have the high chest hit. There's a lot of debate in the bow hunting community as if there's a dead zone in between the spine and the lungs of a deer and we're not here to debate that but what happens when you hit a deer in this high chest area this can either be above the spine or below the spine but all we know is the deer didn't drop since the above the spine is just a bunch of meat the deer's probably going to run away a couple hundred yards and act very uninjured with this shot if you hit below the spine you may have clipped the top of one or both lungs if you hit here, there's probably going to be some meat on the arrow and a little bit of petering spotty blood. If you do find some bright pink blood with bubbles in it, you hit in the right spot and you likely got a lung. In most instances, this shot isn't going to be lethal, so my recommendation would be to back out, wait at least two to four hours, and take up the blood trail by yourself. When you're walking through the woods and there's a high probability of a deer being injured down on the other end of the trail, I would always recommend taking up the blood trail very quietly, very softly, and have your bow in hand. I don't know how many times this has happened where we walk up on an injured deer and you left the bow back at the tree stand or you left it in the truck. If you shot a buck or doe in this high chest area, there's a very high likelihood that it just ran a couple hundred yards and bedded down. So your best chance of recovering this deer is getting in there close and delivering a lethal follow-up shot. All right, the second worst place to hit a deer is the pond shot or sometimes called the gut shot. This shot can either be within the rib cage or back behind the rib cage where some of the other guts are. A gut shot deer usually acts very wounded. They'll usually hover up and kind of hunch together like something really hit them that hurt. And that's because what hit them was lethal. A gut shot's going to be lethal as long as you don't push the deer. In my experience, gut shot deer usually bed down within 100 yards because they know something is wrong. When you walk up to your arrow on a gut shot, what you're first going to notice is there's very little blood on the arrow and there's going to be a lot of stomach matter. Uh, that could be green or brown, um, and there can actually be some contents of what the deer has been eating recently in the area or on the arrow as well. The first thing that you can do is sniff the arrow if it smells like bowel matter, if it smells like crap. But don't panic, this is a shot that you will be able to recover the deer. If I do go after that deer too early and push it out of its first beds, the odds of you recovering it go down dramatically. What you're doing is you're walking up on a deer that's about to pass away and you're spiking its adrenaline levels by jumping it out of its bed. When you shot it initially, the deer might not have known what happened at all. So make sure that you give this deer adequate amount of time if you hit them in the guts. I would say at minimum, give them six hours before you take up the trail. Overnight is a really good recommendation if you shoot them in the late evening and you don't take up the trail too early. There's no doubt that you're going to recover this deer. The third worst place to hit a deer is the shoulder hit. I know as bow hunters, we're always trying to creep that arrow right next to the shoulder as close as we can because we know all the vitals are right in that shoulder area. But if you do hit a deer on the shoulder, this is how it's going to act. It's going to tuck its tail and get the hell out of dodge. This deer is going to sprint away because if you got any penetration at all, you probably got some lungs and you possibly could have got heart. You want to listen closely as a deer that's been hit in the shoulder is running away. If you got any lungs or heart, there's a chance that the deer is going to be dead on its feet. It's going to be sprinting away and if you got enough penetration, 
the all the blood vessels, all the lungs and the heart that you've cut are gonna cause this deer to expire fairly quickly. Depending on how much you penetrate it into the deer, this blood trail could be sparse or it could be great. What I like to do is walk up and check my arrow shaft. I can identify how much penetration I've gotten on this shot and that's gonna tell me whether to back out or whether to keep up on the trail. If I got more than eight inches of penetration, I'm waiting a couple hours and I'm taking up the trail. If I got less than that, I might wait four to six hours on a single lung hit and hopefully go recover the deer later. All right, and the fourth worst shot to make on a deer is the ham shot. Imagine getting shot in the butt cheek and how that would feel. That's about how this deer feels when you shoot it in the ham. What you're going to immediately see with a ham hit, depending on if you hit it directly or just graze it, the deer could fall down as it's trying to run away. But don't let the sound of the deer falling make you take up the trail a little too early. If you hit a deer in the ham and he's continually falling over as he's running away, try to get a second arrow into the deer. The ham is full of arteries, including one of the biggest arteries in the deer, the femoral artery. So if you hit a deer in the ham and you see blood spraying immediately, this could be a good sign that you cut a great artery and the blood trail is gonna be easy to follow. Try to recover your arrow and see how much penetration that you got. Now there is a chance when you take up the blood trail, you're walking up on a wounded deer, but in most instances, I would think if you hit a good artery, just wait a couple hours before taking up the trail. If you hit the right artery, this deer is gonna be done in a matter of seconds. But let's always lean to the safer side and give it an adequate amount of time before taking up the trail. And the fifth worst shot to put on a deer is the liver shot. I hate to say it, but I've seen, I've seen this shot a lot of times. I've seen a lot of people make the liver shot because when you're aiming at the lungs, a lot of times if you pull the arrow just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, depending on how the deer is oriented, you're gonna hit the liver. Don't freak out if you hit just a little too far back, but you don't think it's guts, it's likely that you got the liver. And the liver is a fatal shot with the right amount of time weighted. Deer are gonna react about the same when they get hit in the guts as when they get hit in the liver. They're gonna hunch up and sprint away. In most scenarios that I've seen, a deer with a liver hit is only gonna run a couple hundred yards before it beds down. With a liver shot, you're most likely gonna get a pass through and your arrow's gonna zip through the deer and be laying right there on the other side. How you automatically know that you're gonna have a liver shot is when you pick up your arrow or you take up the blood trail you're going to see really dark red blood. In some instances you can get a great blood trail on a liver shot but in my experiences you're usually going to have a lot of little bitty droplets as you're taking up the trail and it's going to be pretty discouraging but just know with that dark red blood and a confirmed liver shot you're most likely going to recover the deer if you don't push it. The Field and Stream website said to give a deer at least two hours if you hit it in the liver but I would recommend more like four to six hours after hitting it. It's most likely going to die pretty quickly, but I've had some bad experiences when trying to recover liver hit deer. Last year I shot a buck on public land, hit him in the liver, went tracking him after three hours, and we bumped him. He was still alive after three hours. Luckily this deer was hit hard enough. I could walk up and deliver a couple more follow-up shots and get the job done, but I would definitely recommend waiting that four to six hour time frame. If the blood trail is not encouraging, Make sure to get on your hands and knees and do not give up on this blood trail. This deer is most likely dead. If you have to and you lose the blood trail at all, before you start grid searching, I would recommend calling a dog. That dog is going to be able to take up that scent and probably lead you right to that dead deer. If you don't have a dog or can't afford one, get a few buddies, spread out, and try that good old-fashioned grid search. There's plenty of other bad spots to hit a deer, but we wanted to talk about five of them right here and hopefully give you guys enough information that help you the next time you make a bad shot. Big shout out to Field and Stream for the inspiration for making this video. We're gonna link that article they wrote in the description. If you guys like this kind of content from the Hunter's Advantage, make sure to subscribe because we post this sort of stuff every single week. And remember, absolutely assault that like button. As always, we'll catch you guys in the next video.